So I was in the area of where this, this realtor gave me a deal. I was in her area. I called her and said, Hey, I'm in the area, uh, checking out one of my flips. Do you mind if I stop at your brokerage office and introduce myself in person and also maybe introduce myself to the other agents? I walked in the brokerage, spoke to, to her and she introduced me to 15 agents in that office. I walked out of the office with three leads, ended up buying one of those leads the next day. Uh, so the pocket listings with realtors can't be underestimated. What's up? What's up, everybody? My deal makers. What's up, Alex? Good to see you, man. Welcome back. Hope oh, man, you out there in Will. Hawaii. I love your shirt. Yes, sir. Deal makers in the building. Let's go. So guys, we're, uh, we're just going to wait for everybody to kind of continue to log in. Obviously, we're, uh, we're pretty excited to have everybody back here. Our, uh, you know, welcome for all the uh, returning guests. And if uh, it is your first time coming out, obviously, welcome to you as well. We are really excited today. We have a, a special guest on here. It's going to be really fun uh, kind of catching up with uh, Clint. Uh, that should be really, really fun for us here today. And, um, you know, again, for those of you that are kind of getting here for the first time, go ahead and use that chat feature down below. Uh, chat into us. Let us know where it is that you're tuning in from. Uh, again, we'll kind of give it a couple minutes here to kind of just get things started and, and let everybody trickle in. Uh, but I know you know who we are. Alex obviously is out in Hawaii, and I'm out here in Los Angeles. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get Alex started. And, and Alex, why don't you give us a quick update, kind of, uh, you know, what's what's going on in, in your world, what's going on in Hawaii. I know we had some big news out there uh, this week. Why don't you go ahead and share that with the uh, the deal makers here on the call? What's up, my deal makers? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Aloha from the island of Maui here in Hawaii. I'm going to be in SoCal in the next couple of weeks, but uh, exciting time, you guys, in our business. We're having some progress. Uh, we locked up two new deals um, in the last week since we last uh, did a webinar. And um, number one is uh, this amazing Maui deal that we uh, got together. Uh, and it's says trophy property. Uh, shout out to Alex Ibarra here, our acquisitions director here in Maui, out there crushing it because he got the, the lead and we locked up that deal last week, went into escrow. Um, we're not sure if we're going to wholesale that deal or if we're going to hotel it or flip it, uh, but those are usually the best deals, you guys. You get a good enough deal that it allows you to have multiple exit strategies. I'd love to be able to keep this property because it's in Maui and it has ocean view and it's an amazing location, but I'm just not in the position yet to hold on to this size property. Um, but the seller does have another property he's interested in maybe selling, and then there's a, a couple other leads we have in that neighborhood. So it's uh, just great to have progress after putting in work for a couple of months here now. Um, and then we've got a new Antelope Valley deal um, in the city of Rosamond. Um, and so you guys, you know, we've been aggressive in buying deals in that market and Lancaster, Palmdale. Now we're doing this deal in Rosamond, um, which is a little bit, a little bit north of Lancaster, but it's a fantastic property. Uh, we're going to flip that property. Um, Paul um, brought that to the table. He's uh, equity slash uh, project manager partner out there in the Antelope Valley. So shout out to him as well. And so this is really exciting guys to pick up some new deals that puts us at five active transactions right now. And then um, Paramount, you guys, the one we've been having the meetups at is hitting the market uh, tomorrow. So if you guys know anybody that's looking for a great house hack, a great property, it's a duplex, uh, three bedrooms, one bath in the front house, three, one bedroom, one bath in the back, um, both have sizable yards and they've been completely you know, upgraded or remodeled. So that's gonna be hitting the market. It's gonna be going for somewhere around 700,000 from what we're seeing. We're gonna list it at 699. Um, it's a great part of uh, South LA, Paramount, um, nice big street, a lot going for it. So let us know if you guys have any buyers or you guys are interested in making an offer looking at that property. And then our Southgate flip is coming along. We should be finished with that in the next uh, two weeks. So we're really targeting month end to get this thing listed back onto the market. So really excited about that. Went through some things with the permitting, with the city, um, with the exterior and whatnot, but now we're moving pretty fast forward. And so uh, excited about that. I also, um, you know, I'm a little bit more settled into my place here in Maui um, because I got a new place. Uh, I didn't buy it, but I'm leasing a two bedroom, but it's close to the water. It's a walking distance, um, much bigger space where I could host people and have people over and have my dedicated office where I'm now here uh, hosting. And so I'm um, just excited you guys to bring you guys this amazing webinar today. We're gonna be talking about mindset. We're gonna be talking with this um, somewhat of a newer investor, but this guy's a seasoned you know, salesman, business professional, has had businesses in the sports betting world, Clint. We call him Clint the Closer 
uh, Cooper. And so I'm really excited to share his story with you guys and to see all the learnings he's had in a short period of time and how he's crushing it and already has done like eight deals in his first like four months. It's crazy. So excited about that. Let's go. Guys, um, you know, again, just just to uh, to recap, they're really excited uh, about Clint. Uh, we're going to dive into some mindset questions today. And, you know, Clint, again, is, is a, a seasoned salesperson, but he's just recently kind of made the switch into real estate and is absolutely crushing it. So can't wait to hear from him in a little bit. In the meantime, guys, I'm going to go ahead and post the face. Sorry about that. I accidentally muted myself. I'm going to go ahead and post my uh, the Facebook group link here in the chat. Uh, guys, Alex posted a killer video last week. I know a lot of you have already gotten a chance to see it, but man, this is incredible stuff. Like the guy literally dropped bombs, gems from the Maui mastermind that he attended with Brandon Turner and about 30 other really, really big time investors across the country. Um, and Alex was able to share some of his uh, five biggest takeaways from that. So if you aren't already a part of the Facebook group, please make sure you go give us a like or a follow on there. And uh, we want to make sure that we're able to connect with you guys outside of the webinar time. So uh, without further ado, I want to ask a quick poll question to you guys. And it is related to mindset. So that's going to be coming into the poll window right now. We're just wondering if you're on the call right now, are you currently struggling with your mindset? Is, is that something that you, you know, you kind of get up and, and you're having a struggle to get that that you know, charge going, you need that extra cup of coffee to, to make things happen. Um, I know Alex, big, big on mindset. We talk about it uh, almost daily and, and mindset is, is super important to you. So while we run this poll question, um, why don't you start with you know, kind of your mindset when you were getting started in real estate, like what was your mindset like at that time? Well, my mindset um, was of the fact that I knew that I wanted to be in the real estate investing space um, I had been a real estate agent in the past, and I remember that's where I got the bug of thinking about becoming a full-time real estate investor, um, but I didn't take action for a couple of years um, because I was basically being an agent, and I was doing a lot of short sales um, during that period of time after the recession that there was a bunch of those, and I was seeing these real estate investors you know, make a killing. Um, I mean, average profit's like $100,000, and that stuck out to me because I thought, hey, you know, I've been a real estate agent, and you know, I've uh, been in lending. I've done property management and a lot of things I think could help me become a, a successful real estate investor. So I just basically um, thought about it. I said, hey, you know what? What do I want to do? OK, you know what? I think I could be a great house flipper. I think I could flip houses. And if I make good money flipping those houses, I could buy rental property. And so that was just kind of my general mindset about how I was going to you know, get involved and become a full time real estate investor. And then um, I started coming across those podcasts. I come across the Bigger Pockets, which was very instrumental in my beginning education and just getting to hear other people's stories. I also really loved that book, The Millionaire Real Estate Investor. I had read that book when I was an agent, but it didn't really hit home because I wasn't ready for the information. But then when I went back to it after I decided I wanted to become a full-time real estate investor, that book was very instrumental as well. Um, and then so, yeah, Bigger Pockets, Millionaire Real Estate Investor, I read those. And then I kept on coming up that, hey, I probably need to get a mentor or somebody that's doing what I want to do. Um, and so that's when I went basically on Craigslist and say, hey, I'm going to find somebody that's doing what I want to do. And, I, and what can I do for them? I could be in sales. I'm good at selling and negotiating and presenting. Let me go ahead and lean with my strengths. And then I went in there and found a, a great gig and started working in real estate investing. Another thing I, I thought about around that time was like, how much time do I want to invest into this? Um, new career, because I was looking at like, hey, this might be my full-time career that I can do for a long time. I thought in my head, 10 years is the appropriate amount of time to you know commit to this. I know that's hard because of the world changing so fast. But back then in 2000, beginning of 2017, I was like, hey, um, I'm in my 30s. If I commit 10 years into, of this into my life, pretty sure by the time those 10 years are done, I'm going to be retired. I'm going to be financially set and I'm, I'm going to be in good shape and I'm going to be in my you know, early 40s. Uh, mid 40s. So I'm like, yeah, cool. This That can make sense. And so that's my mindset going into this business. And it's it's funny you mentioned that because it was the same with me, Alex. Like I, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad the first time, probably like, you know, seven or eight years ago. And it was like, hey, yeah, that was a good book, but it wasn't like it didn't hit me. The home run moment didn't hit me. And then I came back to it after I started kind of working with you and was like, okay, now I get it. Now I get the end goal. Now I get the concept. 
it all kind of makes sense now. And, uh, you know, even the mentor route, you know, I didn't have to use Craigslist. Luckily, I was able to use Instagram. Um, and luckily, you're pretty active on there. But um, couldn't recommend that route more, you know, find somebody that's actively doing what you want to do. So if you're looking to do burrs, find a mentor that's doing burrs. If you're looking to do fix and flips, find that mentor that's doing those fix and flips. And uh, again, I think that's a great way to go about it. So in, in terms of setting yourself up for success, like how do you go about that? Great question. Uh, I think that there is a foundation to success. You have to set that up. So I love the question. I think number one, you need to have a clear vision. Um, in the video I just dropped in the Facebook private group, I discussed this phrase or the saying that I love. It was called clarity is a new leadership. And what that meant to me was like, if you have a strong vision, a big goal to accomplish, then that's where you need to start with because then you can expand off of that because now you know where you want to go, the direction you want to take. Um, another huge thing of success is just your daily and morning and, and just your, your habits throughout your day. Because if you don't have solid routines and habits, then you can get easily distracted, lose that focus on what you're trying to do. And so you really need to be constantly envisioning not only what you want to accomplish, but the type of person you want to become that will be able to accomplish that big goal because the person you are now is not the person that's going to be able to accomplish that huge goal so you it's really in tandem you need to be focusing on both right the goal you want to achieve but who you have to become to get that and that includes routines the skills and things that you need to acquire of that nature so keep that in mind and then um i think having your goals like very to be aggressive but realistic um, so we set a, a pretty aggressive goal to do 25 deals this year, 24 flips and one you know, acquisition buy and hold. Um, we're falling short of those goals right now, but then we are getting very profitable deals as well. Um, so like, we're not going to beat ourselves up, but we are going to analyze our goals every quarter and say, hey, do we need to realign these goals or we need to you know, set them differently so that way you're not failing, 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 and then you're just not having any wins. So I think that's important. And then more and more than anything, guys, is just having that daily consistent action um, because I think Clint is going to make a big point about that on the, on the webinar today and our prep um, for the webinar, he discussed that. It's just that consistent action. You don't need to take massive action every single day. You need to take massive action over a period of time, but then you do need to be doing that consistent daily stuff like the cold calling, like the, you know, making offers on MLS, like, you know, looking at properties all the time. So, um, I do recommend two very important books in consistency and habits and compounding. One is called Atomic Habits. You guys might have read it or come across it. Should I have it on my bookshelf here? And then um, the other one is Compound Effect, which is a, just a huge, huge um, you know, a routine and just uh, something that you could really build a consistent day-to-day -day off of. So those two books are huge. And I know I'm just starting uh, Atomic Habits. I'm at chapter three and, and I absolutely love it so far. It's, it's that incremental mindset. You know, it doesn't you don't build Rome in a day. It, it takes constant action, consistent action. And, and that's what it is that we're, we're realistically looking for. So um, guys, I do just wanna share the poll results uh, just so you guys can all get a kind of glimpse at this. It looks like the room uh, is evenly split 50-50. Alex and I actually had a, uh, a bet before this to see where the room placed. And uh, so really interesting to see the 50-50 split where, where some people are dealing with mindset issues and some people are just kind of fired up and, and ready to go. Um, uh, again, love what Andy just said in the, in the chat, working on his consistency. I think that's the biggest takeaway that I took from that last question that, uh, that Alex just answered. So let's dive into the next question here, Alex. Um, you know, growth mindset, right? How do you become successful with a pandemic? Like I have this mindset, I wanna be big, I wanna grow, but there's a pandemic going. Like how, how do I get around that? Uh, that's a fantastic question because I think we all um, had the rug pulled underneath us, right? With this change in the entire world so fast and the way it came up, uh, came up, it was just, it feels like it really happened out of nowhere. And now it's like normal to go outside and have to wear a mask all over the world. So it's crazy. But um, what I, I can only speak from my experience during the pandemic, but what in the first couple of weeks, I was just like everybody else afraid, just kind of unsure what to do just kind of sit on the sidelines. But after that time, I really began to dig deep uh, internally and you know, with my group, uh, my team I was working with at the time. And then um, just really think of it from an opportunity standpoint, like, wait a minute, everybody's going through this. You know, everybody's going through lockdown in Los Angeles where I was at, at the time. 
you know, we're all going through this. So everybody's experiencing similar emotions, which is fear, doubt, uncertainty, all these things like, so what can I do to be sure, you know, or to, um, how can I be different than everybody else? Well, look at this as an opportunity. Well, what kind of opportunity is it? It's kind of hard. Uh, well, opportunity is that things are going to change because of the proximity of people can't be around each other as much. What's going to happen? Okay, online, you know, meetings online is going to kind of be a little bit more of that. So I, you know, began to, to embrace the uh, changes by going online and doing more Zoom meetings. I'm naturally extroverted. So I typically like to work in small groups with, you know, people and teams and, but that was, you couldn't do that. So I just saw that there was a global shift and it was, it, it was, that adaptability skill that was needed because most people were just sitting afraid not doing anything just sitting at home now granted there was real danger but you also had to like be understand what the risk real risk was because there was so much media and drama and that was just it did seem seem like it was accurate information that we were seeing so i just was uh, kind of sticking to you know what i felt was like right which was i'm still going to take action i'm still going people are still going to need to buy houses people are still going to need to sell houses i need to continue moving forward um, and then at that time, I started to feel a little bit guilty too because I had a big house. You know, I didn't have you know financial difficulties. I didn't get laid off or anything like that at that time. And so um, I began to give a bunch of free Zoom calls out as a form of me kind of giving back where everybody was struggling, and also for me to be interacting with more people, see what's going on in other people's mindsets. So um, that way I could see, okay, this person is clearly not taking any action and just kind of coming from a just more fear based mindset um, and just fixed mindset. And then I have these other people that are just pushing through it, still taking action, still positive, still see, you know, silver lining. And so those people gave me inspiration, even though I was just kind of giving them something for free, they were giving me something in return. As they say, you guys, the more you give, the more you get in return, right? And so um, I think that's kind of like the way to look at it. You got to analyze it and have accuracy of where you're at and what the situation is, because so many times our perception is, is, is colored by the filters that we have, like our emotions, our experiences and all the other stuff. And, and if that's not in control, um, then you're not gonna be having an accurate view of where you're at and where you can go um, or what opportunities are in front of you. So because I embraced those opportunities, I feel like I came out a lot you know, better because of the pandemic compared to a lot of people who can't say the same thing. And um, you know, I think the, the Zooms is awesome because like you said, you kind of saw a shift, you saw something happening, a new trend coming about and, and you were able to jump on it. But even diving back further than that, like you kept true to your, your, your goals, which is like, hey, look, people are still gonna need to buy houses. And what we found during the pandemic is people are looking to buy houses even more, right? The market is heating up so much. And, and so your, you know, your trueness to yourself and saying, hey, we're gonna keep in this, we're gonna make it through this, you know, it's starting to pay those rewards now. So um, great, great time to kind of bring this up as well, guys. What we're going to do uh, this week, I'm going to post this in the chat right now, but we want you guys to go to the YouTube channel. So Alex Camacho TV, and Alex is going to be giving away this week, one 30 minute phone call with Alex, with the team. So this is legit stuff here. You're going to get to, you know, bring some of your questions, some of your roadblocks, to the table and have Alex and, and us kind of work through those with you and, and get you on that next course of success. And all we need you to do is to go onto the YouTube channel, like and comment on any of the videos on there. Just give us a like, give us a comment. We're giving you guys uh, two chances each. So two people, we're just gonna do a, a random drawing and, uh, and do some some one-on-one -on -one coaching with somebody here uh, for free through the YouTube channel. So that's gonna be pretty legit. And uh, I know Alex always really enjoys uh, mentoring people. It's one of his goals this year is, is to mentor 25 people. So uh, you heard it right here from Amari. He, he's been on one of our one-on-one -on -one coaching calls and uh, he said he would highly recommend it. So if you guys wanna get access to that for free, please make sure you go onto the YouTube channel, give us a like and a comment. Um, Alex, I, I know, you know the biggest thing that I always hear uh, working out here in Los Angeles is it's a tough market, right? How are you able to be competitive or how are you able to be successful in such a competitive market? Los Angeles is tough. And, and I mean, Hawaii, pretty tough out there too, right? So how are you able to do that? Well, I, that's why this, you know, this webinar is about mindset, right? And so I come from an abundance mindset. Now, it hasn't always been that way. I've worked on my mindset through reading books, through affirmations, through having positive habits that we've been talking about in this webinar. But 
the abundance mindset, it, I, I believe there's deals everywhere. When I drive into these neighborhoods all over uh, LA, Hawaii, like I see homes that need, you know, re rehab and repair. So I know there's opportunities there. And then I know through going through all these short sales, all these you know, distressed properties in the past that there was always people that are having problems in their life, you know, losing their job and losing loved ones and stuff like that. And so that happens and, you know, those problems arise. And so there is always a lot of problems. And so I come from the mindset like, hey, I'm here to solve problems. I, there, as long as I'm able to do that through my skills and through my experience and through my hard work, then I'm going to, you know, get opportunities. I'm going to get deals. So I think number one is work on your mindset. You have to believe there's a deal in the market you're in for you to then take action towards finding those deals. If you believe that it's too hard, that's going to affect your, your action and, and you're not going to get it done, bottom line. Um, and then uh, the, also, you have to understand, you guys, that every single investor, no matter how alike we are, we all have different buying criteria. We all have different um, properties that we're, we're wanting to buy. And some are similar, but... The reality is that everybody has a different cost of money to take these deals down. Everybody has different rehab costs because of their experience and their current contractors on, you know, that they're working with. So there's just a lot of variance there, but people don't realize that that are not taking action in the game. But I'm here to tell you guys that th there is a wide variety in what, you know, someone might think it's a great deal. Someone, uh, another person might think it's a horrible deal. So everybody's criteria is different. And then another Big, big lesson that I've learned over this last four years that I've been doing full time real estate investing is that there's really no one investor or investment company that can buy all the properties, that can buy all the deals because you have off market, you have on market, you have multifamily, you have single family, you have a large geographical area in Los Angeles and Southern California, and also here in Hawaii, there's four main big islands um, with all its different pockets. Now I'm getting to know all these areas and the different demand for the different areas over here, but it's just too many moving pieces. I'm losing on deals in LA, frankly, because I'm in Hawaii a little bit. So I might be losing some opportunity there, but I'm making it up with here in Hawaii. And then when, you know, I'm here in Hawaii, like, and I'm not here and I'm maybe getting after it, maybe I'm missing opportunities here, but there's just, again, no one investor can buy all the deals. And then finally, I want to say it really comes down to that consistent, daily effort that you put in to like find opportunities, whether that be cold calling, or you're making offers on MLS, but just that consistency, you, you're making offers every single week. So there's no reason that you're not eventually going to get a deal, even in a competitive market, um, because you're going to find out, you know, how close you are. You're going to get better talking to agents. You're going to get better talking to sellers. So you just need to be constantly in the game because then you're not going to see those opportunities that give you like that confidence to say, hey, you know what? I can do it because you know, I, I've been making these offers. I got close on this one. This one, I was only off 20 grand. And then you should start to build that the consistent lead flow that turns into uh, the, the first deal or the next deal. And so I, I don't buy it that there's no deals in, in competitive markets. That's, you know, that's, that's a fallacy. That is not accurate. That's a myth. So don't believe that, guys. Move forward. There's deals in every market. Love that. And, and you know, like you said, it, it, there's deals because each investor has that different appetite, right? What you like, somebody else might not like. You might have a little bit different money here, a little bit different contractor costs. So it's always going to change. And there's always going to be a deal available out there. Uh, Jacqueline agrees. She says 100% agree. There, there's, you know, it's abundance mindset, right, Alex? Um, let's go ahead and finish up with a, a question here with, with an action item. If people on the call, Alex, wanted to get their mindset right and read a book, what are some good books on mindset? podcasts, books, anything like that? Like what can people listen to or, or you know, read and, and, you know, get some, some mindset going? So I, I think a couple of those books earlier were good, but uh, as far as strictly for mindset, I really love this book called The Code of the Extraordinary Mind by Dishan uh, Lakhania. Uh, it's a fantastic book. I've read it and listened to it several times. Definitely check that one out. Um, also, um, I'm a big fan of uh, Tim Ferriss. He's uh, pretty famous for the uh, books he wrote on the four hour work week, the four hour body and a couple of those books. He also has a fantastic podcast and I think his podcast is, is solid. Um, I've got a lot of gems from, you know, listening to his stuff. And he also promotes like stoicism, which is a type of philosophy um, that just um, has become much more kind of popular, but I resonate with it because it really stresses just having an accurate view of your life and not, you know, letting your emotions kind of get in the way of things. And then um, 
one of the big authors out there that's kind of similar to, to Tim Ferriss is Ryan Holiday. And he has a couple of, uh, of books as well that I highly recommend. So I'd say The Code of the Extraordinary Mind would be a big one. And then um, anything from like uh, the podcast from Tim Ferriss. And then one big one too is Ed Milet. So I don't listen to his podcast all that much, but I have seen him speak several times and I am a fan. So if you want to go into a strong mindset, that guy um, will definitely get you going to go in. So anything from Med Milet as well. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't listen to his podcast, but I do follow him on, on Instagram and like, yeah, the guy always just gets me fired up. So uh, Ed Milet's a good one. And, and um, I haven't read the, uh, the other suggestion that you had there, the code of the extraordinary mind. So I think that's definitely one that's, you know, probably going to get added onto my uh, my list here. So, guys, without further ado, uh, we are really excited to bring you our special guest. He is uh, coming to you all the way live from the Atlanta Closers. He is your starting point guard, shooting an average of 55% on all of his deals. This is Clint, the consistent closer Cooper, coming to you guys live again. Can't wait to have you on here. Uh, Clint is going to be joining us on screen right now. And, and dude, I am fired up to, to hear from you, Clint. Uh, welcome. Uh, Alex will give you a brief introduction here as well. Um, and again, just, just fired up to, to have you here on the call, man. Yeah. So, uh, so Clint, you guys, he's from the Atlanta area. He's only 29. He's a you know, former business owner in the sports betting world. Um, you know, he's sold out, went straight into full-time real estate investing. He's only been investing for four and a half months and he's already done eight deals so far, you guys. It's 62 profit on his first flip. And now he's working on to just hiring, scaling up. He has a great personality. I met him in person in Vegas uh, recently for the Ryan Pena Mastermind. You just, you know, you vibe with certain people. You, we say the vibe of the tribe and, you know, definitely Clint is one of those guys. But thanks for coming on, uh, Clint. Great to have you on, man. Yeah, appreciate you having me. Will, that introduction was awesome, man. I actually I played point guard in high school, so that that uh that brought back some good memories. Awesome, man. <laughs> cool. um, um, so why don't you jump in real quick then, uh Clint, to your story, your background, just I know give a little brief introduction, but if you want to just kind of give the you know the attendees, the audience a little bit more. Yeah, um, so I am 30 years old as of today. Today's my birthday. Um, and um Wait, I, I don't want to overlook that, Clint. You guys. This guy didn't tell us it's his birthday today, so just make sure you show him some love and add him, you know, to Instagram, add him to Facebook and all that good stuff. But this guy is attending his webinar at 6 p.m. his time on his birthday. Thank you, Clint. In Atlanta, this guy is tuning in to give you guys some value. So legit, everybody in the chat, make sure you wish this guy a happy birthday. And uh, when we end this thing up, we'll, we'll have to sing you a happy birthday here together. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. I see all the comments in the chat. Um, yeah, so just a little bit about my story. So I, uh, you know, I, I went to college, you know, did the, um, you know, got a degree in business management, you know, really meant absolutely nothing, didn't help me really get a job or anything. I ended up getting out of college, went to work for my dad in logistics, and uh, I started a little side hustle in sports betting, uh, doing some advising for people. It was a passion of mine. And uh, I, I started doing that and it got to the point where, you know, I needed to quit my logistics job for my dad and, uh, you know, do, do the sports betting thing full time. And I did that for four years full time. I had a partner, um, you know, things kind of went south as a partnership. And, uh, you know, we, uh, during the pandemic, it was tough sports weren't around. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it just wasn't working out between us. And we actually decided to split up and I ended up selling my 50% share of the company to my partner. And so I sold, had a non-compete, had to figure out, you know, what, what am I going to get into? I had, you know, zero idea of what I was going to get into. And uh, I ended up putting my house up for sale when I sold my portion of the business because, uh, you know, I was unsure how I was going to make money and uh, I wanted to scale back. I, I, you know, I had a pretty, uh, pretty big expensive house and uh, wanted to make sure, you know, I could get some income bef before living in a house like that. And uh, so I, I sold the house and I ended up making like $180,000 on the sale of my house, but just my personal residence. And I had owned it for one year. I owned it for one year, did no updates, zero updates. And it just naturally appreciated by 180,000. And that's when the light bulb in my head went off. And, uh, I was like, you know, maybe, maybe I can do real estate. Um, I, I made money buying a house, did nothing to it and made 180 grand. Like, 
you know, there's, there's some opportunity here. So I started looking into it. Um, I ended up um, deciding, you know, that this is what I was going to do. Uh, I had no previous experience other than, you know, selling my personal home, uh, which was through a realtor, I had zero experience. And uh, I joined uh, Ryan Pineda's mastermind, uh, the all, his all-star coaching group. And uh, I read his book, took his course and uh, started December 1st was like, I, I did all the, the learning in November, December 1st. I was like, this is, I'm starting to hustle now. And uh, since then uh, I've gotten eight total deals. I've sold three of my flips, wholesaled one. I've got three rehabs going. And then I've got one under contract right now that I'm fixing to buy. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a good start uh, and I'm, I'm loving it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a game to me. And I'm, I've always been big into sports. And um, so I'm super competitive and uh, it's just been, it's been a fun game for me so far. Let's go. Oh man, I'm pumped up right now. I want to go get some deals right now, dude. You pumping <laughs> me up. <laughs> yeah. That is, that is legit, man. Like, like just that, that's, that's all of it. One capsule. Like when we met you out in, in Las Vegas, just hearing your story, man, I, I think everybody on the call can resonate with that point in their life where they're like, hey, the job isn't working. Like I need to do something else. I need to go a different direction. And the way that you went about it is just like incredible. It's, it's hey, you know what? I, I said, hey, let's cut ties. This isn't working and let's go a different route. And wow, what a route to, to go, right? Did you, did it go significantly over asking or, or what was it that, you know, got you that 180? I'm just kind of curious there. I know that's in the weeds a little bit. No. So I just had a, I had a comp, my next door neighbor sold his house and it, it, it was a, it was a lake house. I lived on a, um, it's called Lake Lanier. It's like the biggest lake near Atlanta. And um, it, it, it's, it, it was at the million dollar price point. So it was, you know, it, it, it's obviously you're going to appreciate more at that price point versus, you know, an entry level home. So, but I had a big mortgage and, you know, I probably honestly made a bad decision buying that expensive of a house um, before, but it ended up working out. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Man, I, I know you mentioned that it, it's kind of like a, a game for you. Where would you say you're at in this new game? Like, are you still at the five yard line just getting started and, and going towards the end zone? Or are you, you know, just getting to the 20 yard line on your way into score? Like again, four months to take down eight or nine deals and, and have a couple of rehabs actively going right now. Like, you know, again, it's, it's just incredible. So how, how did that kind of come about? So I, in my opinion, I'm, I'm just getting started. I see, you know, so much opportunity with real estate that like it's it, uh, real estate to me, you know, I, I ran another business and I, I was, I was part of my dad's business. Real estate to me is one of the simplest businesses you can get in involvement. And um, it, I mean, literally so much easier to get started than, than my, my previous sports betting career. Um, it, it, it's not, it's nothing, uh, you know, it's not rocket science. It's, uh, it's, it, it's very basic. All you have to do is, you know, create relationships. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like sales and, uh, you know, just, just hustle. Uh, that, I mean, that's really all it is. It's just a little bit of hustle. And, and when I got started that first month in December, you know, I just, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't work seven days a week. I worked five days a week and I was just consistent with my actions every day. And, and that led to deals. It, and, you know, when I first got started in December, it seemed like I was never going to get a deal. It was like, you know, man, this first deal, it's just like, it's, it's never going to come. And then it came and then now deals are rolling in left and right. It's just easy now. It's not, it, it seems so hard in the beginning until you do it, you know? Amen to that, dude. It does. It'd be so, I tell people all the time, it's like trying to read a book on like riding a bike. Like, yeah, you know, it's hard at first. Once you get on there, you know, it's, it's not as hard as you think, but you're not going to sit, you know, learn real estate investing just sitting at home either. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, you got to get on the bike and, and take a ride. Like it, it takes that action. And, and, you know, Alex, you were talking about that earlier. It's not like you go from zero houses and no experience in real estate to nine deals in no amount of time. It's that consistent action it's taking those steps, taking those leaps of faith. Um, you know, I, I don't recommend joining a mastermind for everybody right off the bat. Um, you know, that can be a, an expensive down payment just to get started. But you had already identified like, hey, I want to do real estate and I want to do this particular side of real estate. And this is a mentor that can help me get to that next level. And that's where I think it was important for you is, is you kind of identified, hey, for me to take that next step, I need some help. And, and this is a guy that can help me. Yeah. So <laughs> 
Yeah, Clint, yeah. I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, a little bit more about deeply about mindset because it sounds like, you know, um, you had a good foundation because you, you know, had been part of, you know, your father's business and then you also had your own business. How did that affect, you know, your execution, I want to say, for this new, you know, career path that you took? What were some of the skills? What were some of the mindsets? What were some of the transferable, you know, experiences that maybe that has helped you be successful, at, you know, this successful this quickly? Yeah, so um, you know, I think I think one of the biggest things that has led to my success is not negotiating with myself. Um, when I when I have something I, I want to do, like for instance, like my first month in December, from twelve to three, I was doing cold calls and follow ups. Twelve to three, and I never during that first month, I never negotiated with myself that I wasn't going to do that twelve to three every day, Monday through Friday. In that first month, I made sure I was going to be there 12 to three making those calls. And that that's the type of consistency you have to have, especially when you're starting out. Not, you know, I was, I have a family, I, I have a, a daughter and a wife. I wasn't sure how I was going to make money. So I had to, you know, I had to figure out a way to put food on the table. So I, I told myself, you know, every day, 12 to three, I'm, this is happening. No, I'm not going to let someone call me and say, Hey, let's go, you know, do something or, or something's going to come up 12 to three. This is what I'm doing. And that's the kind of, you know, mindset you have to have to be successful. You can't negotiate with yourself. You can't, uh, you know, come up with an excuse of why you can't do something or, um, you know, so I think, I think not negotiating with yourself is big when you're trying to get somewhere. Awesome. Awesome. I, I mean, the way we, we put that, in other words, also is that when you um, lie to yourself or when you make excuses or when you let yourself off of the things that you know you're supposed to fucking do, excuse my language, and you don't do them. And then yes. just, it's like, and then, you, you know, you're complaining to yourself about why not getting, you're not getting the results because you're not honoring your word on what the, the things that you're supposed to do to hit the goals that you said you want. I mean, bottom Absolutely. line. Yeah. And, and, you know, just to go off that, like, you know, there was many days during that first month uh, and I'm not doing the same schedule I'm doing now. Now I have deals rolling and I had to, you know, change my schedule. I'm checking on rehabs now and I'm not doing the exact same things I was as that first month, but that first one month put the groundwork for me to, to be successful and uh, you know, not negotiating with yourself and just jumping right in. Like I, I, I went in, you know, full head, like full force ahead Um you know, making cold calls. I didn't know how to sell real estate. I watched, a, I read a book and watched a course and, and, you know, that, that, that was it. Um, but I, I put in the work and figured it out. And I think that's big with anything you're starting with new, you can't be scared to make mistakes and you can't be scared to get out of your comfort zone uh, because you're not going to grow if you're just doing the same thing over and over every day. You got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to try new things. And, uh, you know, I'm the type of person who just wanted to jump right in you know, even when I bought that first deal, I had no idea how I was going to rehab. I had no idea who my contractor was going to be, who my lender was going to be. I got the deal under contract, figured it all out then. And that, I mean, I think that's the kind of mindset you have to have. You just make it happen no matter what. Make it happen. Love it. Love it. You, we can't hear you, Will. Will, can't hear you. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. I think the uh, the big thing I took there, Clint, is, you know, you said the consistency thing, like, dude, 12 to 3, non-negotiable. Every day, if you call Clint, you're getting a text back that says, no, man, I'm not busy. I'm, I'm busy now. I can't talk to you until 3 p.m. Like, I'm in the mode. I'm in the grind. I'm in the hustle. I'm going. Um, and I think that's probably the, the biggest thing that I took from there is, you know, how many people on this call can honestly say that they have taken that consistent action. It doesn't have to be big. You didn't say you're cold calling for eight hours. You didn't say that you're, you know, changing anything big, but it was just, Hey, I'm making this dedicated commitment to change my life. I have a family that needs me to do this. This is something that has to happen. And this three hours every day, non-negotiable is when it's going to happen. Um, again, mm -hmm. I, I think that's just so powerful. And I think so many people on the call right now are going to resonate with that because they're in that similar situation where it's like, hey, I need to make something happen right now for me, for my family, for my growth, for my future. And I can't just stay stagnant. You know, like you said, I have to keep growing. I have to keep going. And uh, I think that's huge. Yep. Yeah. And, and just, to, just to go off that a little bit too, you know, not, not to get, you know, beat the same horse over and over again, but, uh, you know, when you have an idea to do something for your business or you want to do something, do it right then. 
Don't say, hey, you know, maybe next week I'll do it or, you know, maybe next month we'll, we'll do it. Do it right then. Like as soon as you have that idea to do something, take action right then because you'll end up putting it off and putting it off and nothing will ever happen. We're beating this uh, this mindset horse uh, <laughs> to death right now, but I think mindset is again so huge that we have to kind of beat the horse to death uh, when we're talking about it. Alex, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to ask, like, um, because of this kind of uh, un what most people would call not normal success quickly. Um, I know that's I think it's attributed to how much action you're taking and the fact that you had the right guidance with you know being in the coaching program. And that you have this, you know, obviously the skills and some transferable stuff from everything. But sure. what are your challenges now that you kind of scaled up a little bit? Are you looking to hire? What do you? What's the next level for Clint? Um, I'm just kind of you know, excited and want to know. Yeah. So I actually uh, last night I had an interview um, with a with a guy I know in my area. Um, I you know I'm looking for someone to to be you know my data guy my you know handles my spreadsheets and stuff because I'm not good at that stuff I'm not good at keeping track of KPIs and and track of the books I'm I'm not good at that stuff I'm not organized I'm I'm a sales guy I like to take action I like to you know get out there and hustle but that's not that's not my skill set so that's what I'm looking to hire for right now um, but I, I mean I don't see why uh, you know I've got three rehabs going on right now I don't see why I can't get to 10 with one more person um, I can't, I, I don't see why I can't do a hundred houses a year. It's, it's a very simple business. I just need to put some people in place to do it. And, uh, yeah, that, that's where I'm headed now. And, you know, eventually I would like to get into some apartment complexes and things like that, mul big, larger multifamily deals. But for right now, I mean, the, the market's so good and, um, you know, the flips are going well, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing right now and just try to increase the volume a little bit. That's, that's great. And, you know, the, the thing that I love is that you have that plan to keep growing. So I know you say, hey, let's figure out how to do this first, and then let's go ahead and stack that. Alex, we're in the same phase, right? You know, you mentioned it earlier on the call. We're looking to add a, a multifamily this year as well, but wanted to make sure that we were really dialed in on the flips first because, you know, you don't want to spread yourself too thin. And uh, we talk about it all the time, the roles and goals and having the right people in the right seats. And so I think that's, uh, you know, really exciting for you, Clint, knowing that, hey, the right person that I need to get hired on and, and put in that seat is somebody that can kind of help me organize, help me get everything under control so that we can get this thing to 10 flips actively at one time, which again, hearing that from, from somebody that just started investing four months ago is, is just truly incredible to, to hear the fearlessness in your voice when you say like, yeah, without a doubt, we can get to 10 of these. You know, I just need one other person, one other seat over there. Uh, so that, that's really uh, motivational stuff, man. Yeah. I'd love to, uh, to hear a little bit about some of your current projects right now. I know uh, you said you have a couple of deals going on. If you don't mind, you know, kind of let us know maybe uh, on the current projects, like you're the one man team right now, the one man show, right? You don't have that second person. So what did those look like? Like, how did you take those down? Like, you know, what, what what's the process that's kind of been working for you? So, um, Honestly, right now I'm getting a lot of deals from realtors. Um, about half of my deals have came from realtors, just pocket listings. And uh, so I'm connecting with real, real estate agents constantly. And, uh, you know, I've got a cold caller. Um, but right now I've currently got three rehabs going on. Um, I got two of them from a realtor and one from cold calling. And uh, um, right now they're, they're all cosmetic flips, nothing, nothing major, not getting any permits or, you know, adding square footage, anything like that. And I think that's, you know, important to start, you know, for any investor, I don't think, you know, new investors should be getting into those big rehabs, you know, that, that you're, you know, having to pull permits and, and you can, don't get me wrong, you can do it, but I would personally recommend someone you know, new getting into cosmetic flips first. And I honestly don't think that I'm ever going to get into the big rehabs. Uh, any deal I get like that, I'm probably going to wholesale because it, as you know, with, with big rehabs like that, you're going to have headaches and problems and, and uh, co cosmetic flips, you know, there's plenty of them out there and they're clean, easy. Um, I don't think any of my uh, rehabs will take more than a month and a half. Um, so that, that's kind of, uh, where I'm at right now. And my first deal was actually a lake house here, uh, on Lake Lanier. And, uh, I bought it, did zero rehab and sold it, sold it for a 62 K profit. Um, 
And so just a whole tale. Um, and I like that. Um, you know, some people will say, you know, you could make more money doing the rehab. And I was like, you know, I could make 20 more, but I'm making 60 selling it right now. So, um, uh, that, that's just kind of what I like. Uh, you know, everybody has a different, like Will said earlier, everybody has a different appetite of, of what they like. But for right now, uh, I really like the just light cosmetic flips. And I'd like to dovetail a little bit off that possible claim because I, I, yeah. I completely agree with you on that. Where new investors should not be touching these heavy rehabs. What you focus on is wholesaling, wholesaling, you know, cosmetic entry level flips because then you get your feet wet and then you could decide to jump into the deep end if you want, but don't jump in the deep end right away because that could really, you could lose money and then, you know, not do any deals after that because of that. So um, sure. I could not agree with you more. Um, just focus on stuff that you, you, you can handle and you'll learn from that. And if you want to take those bigger projects on, you could decide to do that when you have the right skills, when you have the right experience. Exactly. And like when I was getting started, you know, I didn't have a contractor. I didn't know who was going to do this work. Uh, so, you know, and I actually got mine just off Facebook, the Atlanta um, contractors group. And uh, um, I, I really wanted to get, you know, comfortable with someone before doing some of these, you know, bigger jobs and bigger rehabs. Um, so, I mean, just, I mean, my word of advice to any new investors is just jump right in and figure it out as you go. That's the only way you're going to learn is just to jump right in. Yeah. What you said about jumping in on a, a smaller project, like Alex, we're not going out there looking at pop the tops and, and adding massive amount of square footages. Like those are more elaborate projects. Like you said, Clint, they take more headaches and they take more time and they take more money and they take uh, more, you know, cycles to go through. Alex with the, the Maui project, like, you know, we went through the same conversation, flipper or wholesale this. And it was the same thing you said there, Clint. It was Hey, we can either make this right now and flip it or uh, wholesale it, or we can make a little bit more and have to go through this whole process of, of doing that whole conversion and the whole flip. And is it really worth that much extra money or, or is it just worth it to just burn and turn and, and you know, wholesale this one and get on to the next one? So yeah, uh, those are in the riches, man. And I think it's awesome that you kind of niched into that little uh, wholesale, you know, cosmetic flip market out there in Atlanta. That's, that's awesome. And, and that, that's the mindset. You know, um, it's like, hey, he knows what he wants. He knows what it doesn't fit his box. And that's, you know, uh, also a mindset thing where you're like, okay, I, I'm, if it doesn't fit this, then I just, it, it's sorry, I can't, I can't do this deal. Yeah. So, um, and, yeah. And, and, you know, to be honest with you, I'm a lazy person. Like I want to do as little bit of work as possible and still make a lot of money. And I owned that lake house, the first flip that I made 62 K profit on. I owned that property for 26 days. I bought it. And within 26 days, we were closed and sold 62 K profit. So um, you know, and I was like, you know, thinking about it, you know, I could do this rehab and whatnot and make maybe 20 more K, but why would I do that when I could just make my 60 K and be on to the next one? So awesome, right back awesome. into marketing, you know, get some more cold calls out there, get some more tech class, whatever marketing you're doing and, and you know, kind of get after it. Right. So yep. uh, again, that's a mindset thing. Like you said, Alex, not everybody knows to just, Hey, let me, let me focus on what works. Sometimes you, you want to get out of the box. I know Jacqueline in our chat right now was saying that she was able to roll her knowledge and experience and confidence into some of those bigger jobs, but that doesn't just happen overnight, you guys. Like you have to take action, you have to dive in, get your feet wet first, and then you can kind of build yourself up to some of those bigger projects. And uh, I think that that's a huge, huge mindset hack right there that you're sharing with folks. So uh, big, big game changer there. So do we have any questions in the chat? Yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, real quick, we'll, we'll, I have just one more kind of question for you, Clint, and then we'd love to, to kind of get some of our uh, participants in here. If you guys have any questions for Clint, go ahead and use the Q&A feature down there at the bottom right now, and, and uh, we'll see if we can get some answers from, uh, from him. But my last question, uh, Clint, is uh, I know you mentioned a couple of these deals. Is that 62K flip the first one ever just kind of your favorite deal just by default? I mean, stumbling into a 67k 26 day deal is is uh is pretty good but do you have any other favorite ones that you want to kind of share with people um honestly my favorite one was probably um i i had a house um i got from a realtor and uh you know it was it's cool seeing you know the transformation a house can make and so you know the wholesale deal is cool and i prefer those type of deals but it, it was cool seeing the transformation of a house. And I, I had a full transformation. Um, I actually closed on this one last week. I made $70,000 on, on a house I bought. 
I owned it for a month and a half, but it made a, a, a you know, a big transformation from where it was at. And uh, we ended up selling it for 20 K over asking had 30 showings over the weekend and uh, you know, got, uh, got five offers and accepted one for 20 K over asking. And like I said, I'll, I'll make right at 70 on that one. So yeah, yeah. that was my favorite deal for sure. Just see, seeing the transformation of a house from where it was to from point A to point B is, is a cool thing. Yeah. Yeah. And personally, I, I, I do have that preference myself too. If it was all about the money, I might do different deals. I might do more wholesaling. I might do other stuff, but it's, for me, it's not all about the money either. You're going to take pride in transforming some of these properties are entry level. So, you know, I think uh, it's, it's great to have that choice as an investor to, you know, hey, do I want to do this or do, do that? Um, but sometimes, you know, yeah, you, you can have, make the decision to buy it, you know, in, in the hotel. There are other times like, hey, I want to see the transformation. This one's going to be a really cool project. Um, those yep. are some of the best deals where you have multiple exit strategies. So good for you, man. Yeah. And it, it was really gratifying to see, you know, the neighbors in this neighborhood that I bought that house in, you know, they were really thankful that, you know, the ugly house next door was no longer ugly. So it, it also is cool, you know, cleaning up neighborhoods too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, what's up, you guys? My deal makers, Amari, Andy, Deborah in the house, Alex. Oh, wow. I love you guys, man. Bobby's here uh, from, I know he's in Vail over there, right? What's up, Adam? What's up, Edward? Ben's in the house. Yeah, a lot of familiar here. faces here. It's good. Vibe of the tribe. Do you guys like Clint? This guy's a monster, dude. We call him Clint the consistent clover. <laughs> I do want to give one quick shout out. A uh, very special lady on the call right now. Uh, just welcomed her onto the screen. Lauren Hunter is my uh, my dear mother, and, and she decided to tune in today. She heard it was oh, her birthday. Hi, Lauren. And she couldn't miss it. So as uh wanted to just say a quick quick hi to my mom on there hi mom everybody say hi to will's mom oh that's so beautiful um i see a lot of other uh faces too what's up iris what's up carlos what's up nathan you out there surfing buddy uh greg oh what's up brandon uh, I, I wish i could shout everybody uh, doug's in the house oh man nicole nicole our virtual assistant thank you for coming along so anybody got any questions for Clint or for me or for Will before we sign off or any comments or any anything you guys want to share? Um, any wins for this week or anything cool? I see Caesar coming in with one. He's uh he's wondering when you're cold calling Clint, like what types of lists are, are you finding success on? I mean, obviously, you know, eight deals in in a couple of months, like you're you're calling some hot lists. So so who are you cold calling? Honestly, it's not nothing major. I'm doing uh, the only list I've pulled so far is absentee owner and high equity. That's that's all. I, nothing major. And, uh, you know, most of these people are getting calls from other investors, but it's just about being consistent and and, uh, you know, consistently following up and hitting them at the right time. You know, getting the right person at the right time is very key in this. Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's, it's the deals are in the follow up. Absolutely. Um, I know uh, Edward's got a question on here as well. He's wondering, you know, in, in a seller's market like we're in right now, how do you separate your offers from some of these other offers? Like, is that really your, your relationship that you have with some of those agents that's kind of separating you from the pack? Or, or how is it that you're able to, to separate yourself in, in such a competitive market right now? To be honest with you, I've had very little to zero competition on all the deals I've done. Um, and it's because I've built a, a rapport with the seller or, or that realtor. Um, you know, I, I can't stress enough how important it is to connect with realtors because I, so, you know, just to give you a, a story of one of my deals, um, I, I, when I first started in December to go along with, you know, my follow-up that I was doing from 12 to three, I, I Googled about 150 realtors in my area. Um, so I called them all saved them in my phone as realtor and then their name. And every two weeks, I text every single one of those people following up saying, hey, do you have any listings coming up uh, that you need a cash buyer on, you know, a fixer upper? And, uh, and, and, I, and what I tell them is, I tell them you can, um, not only can you represent me on the buying side, but when I finish the rehab, you can list the flip as well. And that gives them, them some incentive to want to work with me. And I did that over and over again and it had zero success with it. But after the third month, I finally got a deal doing that. And 
So I was in the area of where this, this realtor gave me a deal. I was in her area. I called her and said, Hey, I'm in the area, uh, checking out one of my flips. Do you mind if I stop at your brokerage office and introduce myself in person and also maybe introduce myself to the other agents? I walked in the brokerage, spoke to, to her and she introduced me to 15 agents in that office. I walked out of the office with three leads, ended up buying one of those leads the next day. Um, so the pocket listings with realtors can't be underestimated, especially look for realtors that have realtors that are doing heavy volume, you know, uh, 90% of the real estate deals on the MLS are done by 10% of the realtors. So find those big time realtors and get, if you can get in with them and get their pocket listings, they're going to have a lot of volume. And what they're looking for is they're so busy dealing with, you know, their nice homes and price homes, they want to get rid of their, you know, ugly homes, as you would say, you know, extremely quick. So don't underestimate real estate agents. Honestly, I've gotten four out of my eight deals through real estate agents. I, bravo, guys. You guys get that? That was gold. <laughs> mic drop moment or what? Like mic is dropped. Like that, that was incredible okay, cool. stuff there. Man. Couldn't agree four more. Eight deals. Wow. Vibe of the tribe. Look at this. I love it. I'm going to take a picture uh, for the gram. So everybody smile. Please smile. Yay. All right. Um, and uh, just, uh, just for the audience. Uh, just let's go ahead and get everybody on the uh, on the count of three. Let's go ahead and give uh, give Clint a big old uh, happy birthday song. So on, on the uh, one, two, three. three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate it. Man, that was our first ever happy birthday song on the call. Uh, wow, that was incredible. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, uh, you know, just to, you know, add a little value to everybody here, you know, I'll give you, you know, what I use as far as for cold calling in, in my list. So I use um, call tools as my dialer, and I actually use them for a CRM. I'm going to make a change at some point. I wouldn't recommend, you know, you can start with them, but if you're going to scale up, you're going to need a, a little bit nicer CRM. Um, I pull all my lists through list source, and I skip all those lists through batch leads. And uh, I text, I do some text messaging as well. I do that with Batch as well. Um, but other than that, that's that's all I use. Awesome, awesome. All right. Doug's taking notes. I know he loved that. I saw the thumbs up, saw him writing over there. So Doug was definitely taking some notes there. If, if you guys missed it, that was the hack right there. He told you how it's done, every bit of it right there. So legendary stuff again, Clint. Uh, appreciate you spending some time with us on, on your birthday. Does anybody have any... Uh, other questions that, that they have for Clint, the closer, the consistent closer that we have here on, on the call here today. If you guys got a lot of value out of what Clint was saying today, do you guys mind giving us a, a thumbs up on the screen just so we know uh, that he spent his time on his birthday here with us very well? All right. I, I see all thumbs up here, man. I, I think uh, everybody appreciates your time, Clint. Uh, we don't want to hold you back much more. I, I know it's already 6 p.m. or coming up on 7 p.m. over there in Atlanta. Uh, Alex, anything else you want to say or, or Clint, anything you want to say in closing, man? Again, appreciate your time, bro. I just want to say thank you again, uh, Clint, for appearing. I really appreciate it. You dropped some fantastic gems. And, uh, the uh, you know, I know everybody got a ton of value. I know I did. And then I thank you guys again for attending the weekly webinar, everybody else, whoever's new, and all the people that are coming back. Love, appreciate you guys. Let us know if you need anything else. Let's get some deals. Yep, thank you. Thank you guys for having me, Will and Alex. Enjoyed it. And if you guys, you know, have any questions, you can find me on Instagram at, at Clint Coop. And, you know, feel free to DM me. I'll, I'll be happy to answer any questions. But, uh, you know, if you're just starting out, get a mentor. You know, you can find one for free or you can spend some money. Get get a mentor, shorten your learning curve. And, you know, Alex is a great guy to reach out to. So, uh yeah, I, I would definitely recommend getting a mentor to shorten your learning curve. All right, guys. As, as we said earlier, just a reminder, you can get 30 minutes free coaching call with Alex. Just head on over to the YouTube page. Give us the thumbs up. Give us the like. and Give us a comment on any one of those videos that we've posted on there. Um, and we'll go ahead and enter you into the, uh, the raffle. We're just going to pull a name 
um, of somebody that's on there commenting. If your YouTube name is different than maybe your, your regular name or, or you know your YouTube name is like Glittery Cat 101 and, and we aren't gonna know that that's you, uh, just go ahead and take a screenshot when you do it and, and DM me and that way I know that Glittery Cat is, is Doug Peters actually, that, that's his, uh, his side personality is, is Glittery Cat over there and, and we know that uh, Melissa is a sparkling sea turtle. So uh, just go ahead and let us know that guys. And, and again, appreciate you, Clint. Happy birthday, my man. Alex, we'll catch you on the flip side and, and guys, we'll see you all here next week. Let's go. See you guys. We'll see you guys. Thanks so much. Clint, the closer.